this is the best UI library for Next.js in my opinion. It is ShadCN UI. It is based on the Tailwind CSS. It gives us a wide variety of components, utilities functions, and a comprehensive icon library. And above all these great features, we can customize these components in the way we want. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can use this UI library in a Next.js version 14 project, and I'm going to show you how we can customize the components. Welcome to Sakura Dev channel, and with that further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, I open up a brand new Next.js 14 project, and here in order to install the ShadCN UI, I go to the documentation of the ShadCN UI, and here I click on the documentation section, and scroll down for the installation, and choose the Next.js. Okay, and then here, this is the script for installing the ShadCN UI, and here I click on the copy, and it gives me four options for the bundlers. I'm going to choose the bun because it is much faster. So I go back to my project here and paste the script for installing the ShadCN UI. It prompts me for choosing the options here. I'm going to go ahead with the TypeScript and select the default style, select the base color, and it asks me where is my global CSS file. My globals.css file is inside the src directory and then app directory. So here we need to change that. I'm going to say src and then app and then globals.css. Okay, and then choose with default one. It also asks where is my tailwind.config file. So in my project, it's tailwind.config config.ts file so we need to change that because the default one here is the tailwind.config.js so i'm going to say tailwind.config.ts okay and go with the default one yes i'm going to use the react server components okay here i'm going to choose yes for creating the components.json file okay as you can see it creates the component.json file and here we can change all these selected options that we have just chosen okay so i think we're done with the installation and now let's go to the ShadCN ui and the first step here is to select our theme so i go to the theme sections and here as you can see we have the options for selecting the theme color so i can choose this nice blue here and i can also customize it it gives me more options for the theme color and also we can choose the default border radius for our components so here after selecting these options we can go ahead and click on the copy code here and then i click on the copy here okay I get back to my project i go to my src directory and then app directory globals.css5 and then choose this CSS variables that are created by the ShadCN UI installation stage. Okay, so I remove them, and just paste the new code here. So let's save this and now we can create our first component with the ShadCN UI. So here I go to the ShadCN documentation and go to the component section and let's create our first component. Let's choose the button element. So here, as you can see, in order to create a button element, we need to run this script in our terminal. So as you can see here, the chat CNUI creates a components in the components directory of our application. So we can change and customize that component in the way we want. It is really awesome for me and I can customize the components. So let's create our first component with the chat CNUI. I choose the bundler here and get back to my project here. So let's clear this off first paste the script here for creating the button elements. Okay, as you can see, it's creating the button and it's done. So here, if I go to the components directory, it creates a UI directory inside it and then a button.tsx file. So if I open it, you can see it creates the button elements and it creates a variance object for it that has some option variant, the default one, outline, secondary, and so on. We can add a new variant to this button element if we want. That is really easy. And also we can change the style of our button components in the way we want. So let's use this button element in our homepage. So I go to the homepage here and just remove the all initial code that Nexus creates in our homepage so let's select them and remove them okay so now we can use our button element here button and as you can see it comes from the components directory and then ui and then button.tsx file so here let's import them first okay and let's put a caption on it 
test button. Okay, now let's run our project. We can use npm run dev or bun dev. That's the same. So as you can see, the Next.js version 14 is really fast in running the development server. Okay, I open up my browser here. Now, as you can see, it creates the test button for me. So now let me show you how we can customize this button element. So let's say we want to add some Tailwind CSS class to the default variant. So here I go back to VS Code and go to the button components here. And in the default variant, we can add Tailwind CSS classes. So for example, let's say we want when active, it means that when the user click on that, we can use the scale 95. Okay, so let's save this. And now if I click on it, you can see when we click on the button, the scale of the button is set to 95% and makes it smaller. So let's add a transition to it. Okay, and if I click on it, you can see it has a nice transition when we click on the button. In this way, we can easily customize our components. So now let's add another component. Let me create an input component and customize it. So I go to the Shatsy and UI component section and scroll down and find the input element. Okay, and then copy the script for creating it. Get back to my VS Code. Let's add another terminal here and let's paste the script for creating the input element. Okay, it has created the button element for us. And let's go to the home page here and add it inputs here. Okay, and then import it from the input file in the UI directory. Okay, so let's save this and get back to my browser here. And here, as you can see, it creates the input element for us. So let's get back to our home page here and change it to justify sooner and get back here. And as you can see, it removes the gaps between the button and input element. And let's add some gap here, gap four. Okay, so now let's say we want to add a label element in our input component. So every time we need to create an input component, we don't need to separately put a label element in our pages and makes the pages more complex. So I get back to my project here and go to the input file. And here, as you can see, we have the input element here, and this is the input props here. So let's add a label to it. Label, it is optional, and I'm gonna set its type to string. Okay, and now let's put a div here and wrap the input element inside this div. Okay, and then let's add some Tailwind CSS classes here. I'm gonna use the flex here and then flex cool to make the flex in the column direction, and let's Put a gap here. I think gap one will do the job for us. And then here, go to the props of the components and extract the label here. Okay. And here, before the input, we can check if the label is existed. Label. So first, let me turn it to a Boolean value. So I put two exclamation mark. It's not a string anymore. It's now turned to a Boolean value. And we can safely use the logic and operator for conditional rendering. In this way, we don't need to put a turning operator for conditional rendering here. Okay. And then if the label is existed, we can render a label element. So I put a label here and then we can render the label props here. So I get back to my homepage here and now we can add the label props and we can say, for example, first name. Okay. So here, as you can see, our input elements now has a label inside it. So let's get back to input element. And here inside the root div here of the input component, we can put a w full class to make it span all the width of the column here. So as you can see, it's now get back to its original size. So in this way, we can put a label element in the chat C and UI element. We can also add a icon to this input elements and before doing that you should know that when we're installing the chat cn ui we install a icon library automatically in our next.js application so we don't need to install a separate icon library in our project so i get back to my vs code and here i go to the input components and here in the input props here we can add an icon here icon and make it optional and set its type to react element okay and then here let's extract the icon here from the props of the components okay and let's close this off to have more space here and i go after the basic input element and now we can check if the icon is existed so first let me turn it to a boolean value and then we can use the logical and operator in our conditional rendering. So here, if the icon prop is existed, we can render a span element here, span, okay. 
and inside it we can render our icon now we can style our icon here i'm going to use w4 for its width text slate for example 600 and i'm going to put its position on the absolute and here we are going to position the span element relative to our root div element so i use the relative class in our root div here and let's add top nine relatively to our span element which contains the icon element and left one okay so let's get back to our page component here and here we can use an icon and then set it to a icon component so in order to find our icon we can go to the lucid react page and here's the address for the lucid react and i go to the icons and as i said we don't need to install it when we install the chat ui the chat ui install this icon library automatically in our project so we don't need to install that okay i go to the icons here and let's say we want to find a person here so i can choose this this one or this one user so the name of the component is user so I get back to my project here and put a user which comes from the react lucid here okay so now let's go to our browser here and as you can see the icon is now placed in our input element but as you can see when we are going to input some text in the component the beginning of the text is overlapped with the icon element so we need to conditionally put some padding in our input element so I go to the input component and here as you can see we have the cn function which is a combination of the tailwind merge and the clsx function so let's enable the word wrap here and you can see all the tailwind css classes here okay so as i said it uses the cn function in which we can use the conditional classes in an object so after the class name here we can use an object here and it's just like the clsx function so here we can say pl six for padding left six okay if the icon element is available okay so if i go to the browser here you can see now the text doesn't overlap with the icon element okay and if i go to the home page here and create another input element without any icon inside it okay and then i go back to the browser you can see the input element doesn't have any icon inside it and the padding element is not applied because we are conditionally set the pl6 class name if we have an icon here so the cn function is really good utility that is installed automatically by the chat cn ui so it has two objectives here first if we have a conflict here with our tailwind css classes for example let's say h6 here you can see we have a conflict here but the cn function only apply the second h class here and then we can add a conditional class object here and conditionally set our classes into our component so that's it for the input component and as a last thing in this video let's create a toast component with chat cn ui so i get back to the chat cn component section and let's scroll down for toast element here okay let's copy the installing the toast script here open up our terminal and let's create another terminal here okay paste it here okay it install a toast component here a toaster and use toast function so let's get back to the documentation here we need to go to the layout.tsx file and add this toaster component in the root layout of our application so i go to the root layout and here after the children i'm gonna paste it here and let's import it okay and let's get back to the documentation you can see we need to import the use toast okay so for example let's go to the home page here and let's import the use toast here and then here we need to extract the toast function from the use toast so here in the home page extract the use toast now we need to set it to use client here and then here in the onclick event of this button we can use that toast function so here we say onclick and then let's copy the toast here okay so now if i get back to my browser here and I click on the test button you can see we have a toast here we can also change the variant of the toast element and for example let's say variant and use this variant here 
And if I click on the toast again, you can see it now has a red background. We can also add a custom variant to our toast element and that is the beauty of the chat CN UI. So here I go to the toast.tsx file inside our components directory. Okay, and as you can see here, we have the variants object and now we can add another variant here. For example, let's say we want to add a success variant and now we can add our Tailwind CSS classes. We want a border, BG, green, 500 or 600, okay, and then text white. So let's save this and let's get back to our page component here and set its variants to the success. As you can see, it has a nice autocomplete here. Let's save this and get back to my browser here. And if I click on the button here, you can see now our toast element has a green background. So yeah, as I said, we can easily customize the chats and UI components. And I think it is really a great feature for us. So that's it for this video. And if you liked the video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please support me and subscribe to my channel for more updates. Okay, have a nice time. Bye-bye.